Today, realagriculture.com comes to you from the Climate Change Symposium at the University of Guelph. We're joined by Dr. Stella Coakley, a botany and plant pathology professor at Oregon State University. Welcome. Thank you. Um, your presentation today, you talked about um, the impact um, climate change is having on plant pathology and, and the diseases that they cause. Can you, can, can you elaborate on that? Certainly. Um, wherever you're growing uh, host plants, and I'm going to confine my comments to what I would consider to be the major food crops, you would expect to have a suite of plant pathogens that will um, create disease on those plants. Mm -hmm. The ideal way to control disease is by growing resistant cultivars or uh, planting seeds that don't have pathogens associated with them. Mm -hmm. uh, in the context of climate change, you would expect to continue to have problems with the plant pathogens we have today. Now you mentioned, you made a comment in your presentation that, you know, um, you, you don't know if climate change is the real driver here because, you know, things are always mutating. Um, there's always changes. One, one pathogen goes away, something else comes to replace it. Is, is it just the sort of the continuation of, of evolution as we know it? Most likely, yes. Um, whenever you grow large uh, quantities of plants of the same identical genetic makeup, uh, commonly called a monoculture in agriculture. The larger acreages you have a monoculture, if there is a mutation of a pathogen, the greater the likelihood that you will have widespread disease mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to limited disease. Uh, breeding for resistance is the best choice for cereals. Unfortunately, if everything is identical, if you have a mutation of a pathogen, mm -hmm. Uh, you may not know that until the season in which your crop goes down uh, in a major way as a result. Yeah. One of the things we see in agriculture today with prices, obviously uh, corn and soybeans being so strong as they are, wheat not as strong. Um, you know, some farmers um, just dropping, uh, you know, some crops from the rotation, tightening up those tation, rotations, seeing more monoculture. Um, that's obviously a challenge and a danger. Uh, yes, because one of the ways to break up disease pattern from year to year is by crop rotation, ideally with crops that are distinctly different than the ones you've been growing. So corn with uh, soybeans or wheat with um, potatoes or some other combination. Tell me about, we've heard a lot about um, UG99, the new resistant rust in wheat. Um, is this an issue related to climate change or is it just you know one of those mutations we'll continue to see in crops? Um, I would put it into the expected mutations you would continue to see in addition to UG99, which is stem rust on wheat, um, for which there is very little resistance bred into the common wheats grown mm -hmm. um, internationally. Uh, stripe rust is a distinct separate disease. We have new strains of stripe rust that can in, uh, infect wheat at much higher temperatures than were true for the older strains. Uh, is this related to global climate change per se? Um, not likely, but it will continue to be a problem uh, as you move through time. The Wherever you grow hosts, you will have pathogens. Mm -hmm. and we, we've seen a lot of innovations in fungicides and um, you know, will that, and those, that type of products, will that continue to be the answer? Um, well, fungicides right now are limited to um, fungal diseases um, and for crops of sufficient value that you can afford to apply them. That's assuming you have them. Um, in developed countries, uh, U.S., Canada, A uh, Europe, you can afford to buy the chemicals, you have the equipment to put them on, and you just have to look at the bottom line of how many times versus what the value of the crop is. In general, you apply fungicides to higher value crops. Uh, cereal crops aren't always higher value, and when you move into subsistence farming in uh, developing countries, uh, you're unapt to have fungicides available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in the broad context as well, it, it, does resistance become, become an issue as well? Well, resistance is an important piece of dealing with plant pathogens. Uh, some resistance genes 
uh, and there are different types of resistance. Uh, you want to get a broad-based resistance. Multigenes involved tend to stand up better than if you have just a single uh, gene for resistance within a cultivar. So how you breed for resistance will be a very important factor. However, um, the cautionary note is it takes time to breed resistance for resistance, which means having the fungicides in the short term are absolutely critical to having growers stay in business. Mm -hmm. That's assuming, again, that they have the can afford to put the uh, fungicides on, and certainly in the case of wheat, uh, the value of wheat is sufficiently high now that you can apply fungicides and come out economically a few years back, you would not have had that as an option. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned in your presentation, you, we talked about you know increased storm activity, the movement of hosts, um, and, 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 and hurricanes, and, and seed movement, and uh, the travel that is uh, the potential impact of, uh, of pathogens and movements, and all the way to the end user. Um, is that going to be a bigger challenge going forward? Well, the bigger challenge, uh, I think, is that under a global trade, which we have now, and will continue to have, and further continue to move plants and plant materials into areas where they previously, previously have not grown. So aligning that with a conversation about climate change, if you have um, a expanded growing area as you move into the northern climes, uh, climate areas, then moving new plant materials um, or potentially having pathogens that are present that then attack new materials coming in will be an increased problem and something one needs to be alert to. It's not different than in the past. It's simply you have to factor in the diseases as an important limitation on producti productivity, at least potentially. Mm -hmm. And the final question, basically building on that, I mean, what are producers in agriculture, you know, what do they have to do? How do you avoid disease? What are the management decisions that you know they should be focusing on? Well, I think inherently producers are always focusing on the bottom line and having enough crop to pay the, the bank at the end of the season. The avoidance of pathogens is always the best approach. That's the least expensive approach, mm -hmm. usually. Um, paying attention to disease if it's present and um, considering whether growing the same crop, the same variety, and the same ground mm -hmm. next year is a wise thing to do. So looking into crop rotation, looking into new, um, uh, more resistant cultivars, or simply taking cultivars you've grown successfully in the past and growing a different one next year. Often there are options in this regard, and I think growers who are in intuitively uh, very intelligent about uh, most of their choices or they wouldn't be in business, mm -hmm. um, pay attention. And I think paying attention and getting assistance and seeking additional knowledge on, I have this pathogen this year, um, is it apt to be back next year? I can give you a real life example of striped rust in Eastern Oregon and Washington, uh, West, uh, Eastern Oregon and Washington, where last year they did not anticipate quickly enough that they were in fact dealing with a new strain of the uh, rust and that they were going to need to put on fungicides. Last year was not a good year. Mm. This year uh, the environmental conditions are probably just as favorable, but fungicide applications make all the difference between uh, how much crop they will harvest. So knowing uh, what's in your soil is a great way to uh, knowing uh, there's both foliar and soil-borne mm. diseases, and they're effectively different mm. types of, but knowing what you're dealing with and knowing it's likely that if you grow the same crop two years in a row, if you have a problem one year and you live where the climate is model, uh, and mild in the mm. winter, uh, you're probably going to have more of it the next year. Great. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for your insights. You're very welcome.